What I like about multiclassing is that it adds flavor to your gameplay. In my playthrough, I always like to roleplay my characters over making them overpowered. Having said that, this video is not about how to make your characters powerful, but to simply add flavor to how you want to roleplay your main character. Hello guys, Genuine here of Genuine Gaming, and here are my 7 favorite class dips in Baldur's Gate 3. But before anything else, some of you might ask what is a class dip or a level dip. A class dip or level dip is taking a few levels in another class to optimize or add flavor to your character build. Some would say a class dip is taking up to 2 levels of another class. Others would 3 levels or 4 or even 5. But for me, I would say 2 levels and you can extend it up to 3 levels is a class dip. Anything more than that is already called multiclassing, especially in Baldur's Gate 3 because it is capped at level 12. Generally, I would suggest to level up your main class up to level 5 before going into class dip. Let's begin with number 7. Two levels of cleric with war domain or tempest domain. Dipping into first level cleric ward and tempest domain are two of the few ways to get heavy armor proficiency. Aside from the heavy armor proficiency, they also come with martial weapons proficiency. I think this is the best way to create a full armored battle mage with wizard or sorcerer as your main class. You will be wearing heavy armor and wielding any weapon you want. With the wizard as your main class and dip two levels of cleric with war or tempest domain, you would not lose anything from your wizard class except for the last feat that you will get at level 12. At first level, a tempest domain cleric gains wrath of the storm, a powerful ability wherein the cleric can use his reaction to creatures within 5 feet of him to cause the creature to make a dexterity saving throw. The creature takes 2d8 lightning or thunder damage on a failed saving throw, and half as much damage on a successful one. You can use this feature several times equal to your wisdom modifier. A war domain cleric at first level gains the war priest feature, where a cleric uses his attack action can make one more weapon attack as a bonus action. At second level clerics gain channel divinity. A tempest cleric gains destructive wrath. When you roll a lightning or thunder damage, you can use your channel divinity to deal maximum damage instead of rolling. This ability is very powerful when combined with a sorcerer or wizard specialized in casting lightning or thunder spells. A war cleric gains guided strike. When you make an attack roll, you can use your channel divinity to gain a plus 10 bonus to the roll. As you can see, a lot of powerful features are gained by just dipping two levels of cleric. Number 6. 3 Levels of Warlock with Pact of the Blades Dipping into a Warlock class is beneficial for a charisma build character like Sorcerers, Bards, and Paladins. Level 1 Warlock would give you access to a powerful cantrip called Eldritch Blast. This will allow you to conjure a beam of cracking energy, dealing 1d10 force damage to your enemies. This uses an attack roll to hit your enemy and is affected by Charisma Modifier, very useful for charisma build characters. At level 2, the Warlock will be able to gain Eldritch Incantations, of which you boost this cantrip by using Agonizing Blast and Repelling Blast. Agonizing Blast will allow you to add your Charisma Modifier to the damage it deals. And Repelling Blast, when your Eldritch Blast hits an enemy, you can push the creature up to 4.5 meters away from you. If you have an extra level to spare, you can dip up to level 3 wherein Warlocks has the option to take Pact of the Blade wherein you can use a Pact weapon. This weapon counts as magical to overcome resistance and immunity to non-magical attacks and damage. You're also going to use your Charisma for the attack rolls for that weapon. You can use Bind weapon to any kind of weapon even if you're not proficient with it. If you bind the weapon with a Warlock, the Warlock becomes proficient with it and uses his Charisma modifier for its attack and damage rolls when using that weapon. Number 5. 3 Levels of Fighter with Champion Subclass Dipping into 2 levels of fighter would boost any kind of build. I do not see a possible mistake when you dip 2 levels of fighter in Baldur's Gate 3. You would miss 1 ability score improvement at level 12, but you gain more than that because of Action Surge. Action Surge is a level 2 ability of a fighter that allows the fighter to take additional action on top of their regular action. And what I like about this ability is that it gets replenished after a short rest. Try to imagine a wizard who can cast Fireball twice in a round because of Action Surge. What distraction he could make in a round. 
I would describe Action Surge as a one-round haste spell without increasing your movement. Aside from Action Surge, dipping into the fighter would also give you an option for a fighting style and Second Wind. Second Wind is an ability that allows the fighter to use a bonus action to regain hit points equal to 1d10 plus fighter level once every short rest. Then continue at 3rd level, choose the champion subtype to gain improved critical hit. This would reduce the required critical hit roll by 1. This effect can stack. This feature is pretty good for builds that utilize critical hits. If you have Orc as your race, try this level dip. Number 4. Two Levels of Ranger The reason why I put Ranger a little bit higher in the ranks is because I love dual wielding characters. One way of optimizing a dual wielder character is to dip into two levels of Ranger to gain the two weapon fighting style and the Hunter's Mark spell. Ranger's Hunter's Mark this would allow the ranger to mark a creature to deal an additional 1d6 damage whenever you hit it with a weapon attack. If the target dies before the spell ends, you can mark a new creature without expanding a spell slot. Although the ranger would need their first turn bonus action for the hunter's mark, after that they don't need their bonus action much and can use their bonus action for the extra swing that also deals extra damage because of hunter's mark. At level 1, they gain favored enemy. You can choose ranger knight to gain heavy armor proficiency. Also at level 1, they gain Natural Explorer Beast Tamer would let you cast a Find Familiar spell. Urban Tracker would make you proficient in Sleight of Hand. Wasteland Wanderer, Cold, Fire, or Poison would make you resistant to the damage of your choice. Number 3. Three Levels of Bard with College of the Swords As I mentioned before, I love dual wielding characters. Dipping into three levels of Bard is a nice choice especially if you want to dual wield Hand Crossbow. You may not gain the archery fighting style, but you gain a very powerful ability of a bard from the College of Swords that is Blade Flourish. Blade Flourish would allow the bard to take the attack action to execute three types of flourishes that add extra damage and either add defense, knock the foe, or hit multiple foes. This would make your build a crossbow linger like a gunslinger but with hand crossbows. At level 1, you gain Bardic Inspiration. Bardic Inspiration is a powerful ally booster. The bard uses his bonus action and his turn to choose one ally or creature to gain one bardic inspiration die a d6. Once within the next 10 minutes, the creature can roll the die and add the number rolled to one ability check, attack roll, or saving throw it makes. Once it is used, it is lost. A creature can have one bardic inspiration die at a time. At second level, the bard gains Song of Rest. At the end of a short rest, each of your companions gain an extra 1d6 hit points. He also gains Jack of All Trades, wherein he can add half of his proficiency bonus rounded down to any ability check you make that doesn't already include his proficiency bonus. Then at third level, aside from Blade Flourish, level 3 bard will give your character the expertise in two skills. The expertise feature would double your proficiency bonus for any ability check. Number 2. Two Levels of Monk Dipping into two levels of monk is good for characters high on both dexterity and wisdom. At level 1, you gain two nice features of a monk class, an armor defense and martial arts. An armor defense will make your armor class equal to 10 plus your dexterity modifier plus your wisdom modifier if you are not wearing armor or not holding a shield. Martial arts will allow you to use an arm strikes and monk weapons. Now what are monk weapons? In BG3, a monk weapons are light or versatile weapons that your character is proficient in. So those weapons would use dexterity instead of strength for the attack and damage rolls. You can also make use of your bonus action for an additional unarm strike if you use your attack action with an unarm strike or a monk weapon in your turn. For example, if you use your attack action by using a quarter staff to attack an enemy, you can also make an unarm strike as a bonus action. So, an Elf Monk level 1 who is proficient with Longsword would make Longsword a Monk weapon. Meaning, equipped with a Longsword, the Elf Monk can use Longsword and use his dexterity bonus instead of strength for the attack and damage rolls. He can also use an Unarmed Strike for his bonus action after he attacks with his Longsword. At level 1, you also gain two key points which you can use to make Flurry of Bows. Flurry of Blows allows you to punch your enemies twice by spending a key point and a bonus action. At level 2, they gain Patient Defense and Step of the Wind by spending a key as a bonus action. Number 1, 3 levels of Rogue with Thief subclass. You gain a lot by just dipping 3 levels of Rogue with a Thief subclass. The most important feature of this level dip is the extra bonus action of the Thief. This is just awesome. You can do a lot of things with an extra bonus action. It can give you an additional attack. 
It gives you additional movement with cunning, dash, you can use potion with it, and many other things. Extra bonus action is an S tier ability of the Rogue Thief. At level 1, you gain sneak attack and expertise. And if Rogue is not your first class in level 1, you gain an additional skill. Expertise is giving you another proficiency that you are very good at since your proficiency bonus is doubled for any ability check you make with that skill. Snake Attack allows you to deal an extra 1d6 damage once per turn to one creature you hit that you have an advantage or is flanked by an ally. At level 2, you gain Cunning Action. You can use your bonus action to dash, disengage, or hide. These abilities are great for a mobile character. So those are my top 7 favorite class dips in BG3. What are your favorite class dips? Let me know in the comments. Maybe I'm going to try it soon in one of my playthroughs. Do not forget to leave a like if this video is helpful. And for more Baldur's Gate 3 videos, subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video. Ciao!